Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Guys and dolls, welcome back. It's me, Cora. Today I'm going to be starting a new series here on my channel. Periodically, I will bust out a few palettes, put them on Instagram or Facebook or somewhere, somewhere on social media, and ask you guys to tell me which palette you'd most like to see a tutorial with, and then I'll go ahead and do that. So um, I'm not exactly sure how often this is going to be. It seems like a really good idea, but I just don't want to make a commitment to something that I can't follow through with. So we're just going to say periodically for now um, until it picks up speed. I thought I would start with a palette that I really like that I got last summer. This is the 70s Freeform palette from Senna Cosmetics. It's one that I never really got around to making a tutorial with so I thought this would be a good one to kind of kick this off with because the whole point is to use these palettes that you just forget to use because all this new stuff comes out and you just kind of forget about what you already have and you might have things that you actually like better than the new things that are coming out. I adore this palette. Every single eyeshadow in here is phenomenal. Uh, the blushes are great. I use every single color in this palette and it's one of the things I love about the Senna Cosmetics Decades palettes so much is that it's just the right amount of product. I also have done a video using the 80s Vivid Excess so if you want to go ahead and check that out, I'll have a link to that in the description bar down below if you'd like to see that. Um, so going forward, like I said, I will go on social media and ask you guys what you want to see. I may occasionally just use a palette that I'm just jonesing to use for some reason. And this is really, uh, you know, an opportunity for me to use more of my makeup that I have in my collection. And it's also an opportunity for you guys to get tutorials for palettes that maybe aren't, you know, the new hot thing or whatever. I think that's pretty much all I have to say at the beginning of this video. Let's go ahead and get on with the tutorial. I'm digging this this big fluffy hair, which I do show you how I achieved. Fluffy. To begin this process today, I went ahead and filled in my brows with a blonde brow pencil. I used Fling from MAC. And then I applied my usual eyeshadow base, which is MAC's Painterly Paint Pot. So we're going to begin today with this gorgeous orange color called Mace. It's just the most beautiful, like, pepper orange. That's what it reminds me of. And what I'm going to do is place that in my crease. And I'm using a It Cosmetics brush to do this. And I'm just going to do the whole windshield wiper motions. You guys know how I like to do. I always map out my crease area first. I don't always do it, but like that's pretty much base camp one what I usually do. Because I have slightly hooded lids, so it really helps me get an idea of the framework of the overall eye. And this is what works for me, but some people prefer to go in with the darker colors first and then sort of build out from there. It really just depends on your preference. Either way, the colors we're going to use are the same. Um, it's just the method of application that'll be different. Next, I'm going to just use what's left on that brush and sort of flirt that color all the way up to my inner brow area right there. So we get like a really cool look from the side. Yeah. So next I'm picking up Cinnamon Wine with this domed brush from Urban Decay and I am going to actually mm, do something a little different. I'm going to start this out on the bottom and then sort of curve it in. So I'm going to squint a little bit to get an idea of where that muscle is and then I will relax and put it up into my crease. And then grab a bit more shadow to really build that up in the crease. The main thing right now is just getting the color on. But now I need to blend it out. So I'm going to pick up the same brush that we used for Mace. These are all synthetic brushes so far. And just blend that to your heart's desire. Okay. And then to soften that even further, I'm going to pick up Nectar, which is the blush from the palette. And I will use that along the edge of the colors that we've applied so far. The highlight in this palette is great. It's called Old Ivory. I'll pick that up on a MAC 252. I will tap it off because it's really pigmented. It's much more than you need. And I will sort of stamp the color on right there under my brow and then I'll flip it over to the other side of the brush so I can just sort of blend it out from there because we don't need tons of it. And then without picking up more product, I'll do the other side as well. And then I will use what's left over on the brush to just go around the edges of the shadow that we've already done. 
Okay, so next I'm going to go back in with Painterly. As you can see on the lower portion of the lid, we did have some transfer from the warmer colors, just from blending and stuff. It's not really that obvious, but to make the green color pop, it's best to sort of eliminate them. So I'm gonna take that same brush from earlier and just pop that on the lower portion of my lid. Like that, and these kind of just makes it look a little more cleaned up versus the other side. So next I'm gonna take the green eyeshadow from this palette. It's called Sago Palm, I believe. Uh, it's a beautiful sort of avocado green. And we will pop that on all over where we just placed Painterly. And then just right out here in the outer corner where we have some fallout from the green, I'll just kind of flick that away with the brush that we used to apply Cinnamon Wine. For tight lining my upper lash line, I tend to prefer a slightly drier pencil. So this one's from Makeup Forever. This is the Aqua XL. This one's really great for applying color without transferring it too much all over the place. It's very, very black. If we get that color good and wiggled in there, taking it all the way across like that. And if you do this right, you won't really need any other liner because you can still see the color. Absolutely, compared to this eye. Uh, it's just a different way to do a line. Using some Meissler water to remove the fallout, being careful not to disrupt that soft line. Vanilla pencil from NYX, this is from the Faux White collection. I'm just using a brush to blend that out, make it nice and soft and uh, really makes it look a little creamier to blend it out. Next to that, I'm using Brazen Bronze from the palette just behind where I applied the pencil and just applying that into the inner part of the crease. And then over the top of the pencil, I'm taking the Old Ivory eyeshadow from the palette. It just really makes it pop and makes the whole thing a little brighter. I'm not gonna show the entire foundation process, but I did want to kind of clue you guys into the concealers that I'm using because I feel like it's important to the look because it totally changes the dynamic because I no longer have under eye circles and I don't have like weird, like orange halo where it's not supposed to be. Uh, this actually does help. So this is the NYX Gotcha Covered Total Waterproof uh, Concealer. Maybe not actually the best for the under eye, but it has a lot of coverage, so it's good for a look like this where you really want that to be nice and cleaned out. At this point, we've applied foundation stuff. You can see we need to do like a little bit of surgery here. So I'm taking the brush that I had cinnamon wine on earlier, and I'm not applying more product onto the brush. I'm just using the residual to sort of bring this back to life. See how that looks compared to the other side? So we'll do the same over here. You might notice that in my inner rim on the bottom here, we've had some transfer from the top. So just take a small Q-tip. Hopefully not poke myself in the eye too much and just clean that up, see? And then I'm going to replace it with a yellow pencil. This is from the NYX collection. It's the same one I used on the inner corner and I'll place that all over the inner rim. Okay, so for my lower lash line, I'm gonna be using Burnt Sienna, also from the NYX Faux collection. This is one of the Faux Blacks. And it's a beautiful dark burgundy brown. So I'll use that right close at the lash line, bring it up a bit and I'll bring it to meet the liner on the upper lash line that's poking out from the inner rim. And then I will take a very small brush and delicately blend that out so it's not a harsh line. To blend that out further, I will pick up a bit more of cinnamon wine. Just sort of blend that to meet the colors, the eyeshadow that we've already applied. To polish it up, just do a final pass around with the big fluffy brush you used earlier, just to smooth everything out. So I'm going to do the bottom lashes first. I'm using Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. And normally little things like smudges and stuff would really bother me, but I think this is such a different kind of look. It's such a deconstructed type of look. I'm not going to worry too much about them. In fact, if you look... I think it actually kind of makes it cool. I'll do it on purpose on this side to match 
Ordinarily, I would use fake lashes to really kind of call attention to the upper eyelid and make the eyelid look less heavy, but the heavy eyelid look is exactly what I'm going for with this look. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in with some mascara. I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes because I love my eyelash torture device. Bring a bit more of these mascara blurbies. Following the shape of the shadow. Remember to rotate the brush to get some fresh mascara on. So when it comes to things like contour, I'm not going to do a traditional contour, but I will use the sandalwood eyeshadow from this palette, which is a bit more pink than I would normally do for a contour, but I will apply it where I would normally do. Those 70s cheeks going. Next I will take Honey Nectar, the other blush in the palette, and apply that to the apples of my cheeks and then blend it black, bl bl blend it back. look is overall so warm I think I could pull off this highlight today this is show gold from Mac it's very sparkly and it's a little bit warmer than most of my highlights we're gonna go ahead and put this one right on the top of the cheekbone with my Wayne Goss fan brush it's very glittery put some on my nose Cupid's bow Okay, and then what am I going to do for the lips? The lips, though. When you think you're filming, but you're not. I was just talking about filling in my little freckle that I always fill in. I'm using the Vivid Brights from NYX today. This is the shade uh, Vivid Violet. So, that's that. For lips today, I use the MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer to just kind of get them started. And then for... Uh, color, I'm going to fill them in with my Bad Blood pencil from Urban Decay. I looked for my lipstick, but it must be in a purse somewhere, and I don't really, I don't have the time or the patience to go look for it right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill my lips in with the uh, pencil. Actually, change of plans. Over the top of that, I'm going to use Boss lipstick from Smashbox. This is one of their liquid lips that is awesome. I really like the way that the wand is shaped on this. It's sort of thin and flat and pointy. So you could use different sides to really get a nice clean edge. It's really helpful for someone like me that has a lip scar and an uneven lip edge because it really helps me to use whatever works best for whatever part of the lip. For the top of the Boss lipstick, I'm going to take uh, this one from NYX. This is Afternoon Heat. It's a bit deeper and it's a bit glossy as well. Okay. Rock it back and forth, make it extra, extra. Read all about it. The final piece of the puzzle is to actually stand up and flip your head over and brush all your hair forward. It's really good town. Brush it up, down, backwards, all that nice neat stuff. Flip it over and it's gonna lay all kinds of different ways. And this is kind of 80s-ish in a way, but it's also quite 70s as well. Hair is cut to be feathered. It would look a little bit different than this. Obviously my hair is not cut for this style, but 
you get the gist. So there you go. This is the completed look using the Senna Cosmetics 70s palette. I adore this palette. The quality of the shadows is just like amazing. You're having a great day. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you bye.